So on Gilmore Girls, there were a lot of things that got brushed off and treated as normal when they really weren't. Gilmore Girls is a comfort show, a heartwarming show. It's a show that is about like relationships, quick banter, it's quick wits, coffee dates, town musicals, a tight-knit community, and it was just nice to watch for me. However, I don't think I'll be doing justice to this without calling out some of the things that I felt weren't shouldn't have been normalized on this show and this is not to blame the writers or anybody or the actors this is just my opinion about things that i believe should have been taken a bit more seriously and should absolutely not be normalized in our regular lives so let's talk about it hi my name is susan if you're new here welcome and if you're not new here how's it going now the first thing i want to talk about is the daddy issues across the characters absent fathers leave a deep scar it's not cute we see in the show that lorelei rory jess my I mean, Lorelai didn't exactly have an absent father, maybe an emotionally absent father, yes, but Rory just had absent fathers. A lot of their issues were shaped by this fact. Like, the fact that they had absent fathers kind of got minimized to the point where it can be um, seen as normal or okay, but I think that this is something that is absolutely not okay. It's not okay for a dad to not be present in their in their child's life and just show up when the clock 16. I'm talking to you, Chris. Anyway, the next thing I'll talk about is Lorelai and Rory's codependency. The reason I'm talking about this is because I think that it is very easy for someone to watch the show and feel like they don't have a good thing going on with their mom because their relationship is not like this. Especially if you're watching this as a, as a teenager. Please, I hate to break it. I love to break it to you. There's nothing wrong with the relationship you have, you have with your mom. <laughs> I mean, if it is healthy. If it is healthy, there's nothing wrong if you don't have a bond like the Gilmore Girls bond. It doesn't mean that anything is wrong with you or wrong with your mom. The fact is, it was heartwarming to watch this, but we can't rule out the fact that there was some form of codependency here um, where sometimes we're like at the boundaries in the room with us. I think this relationship was great in the sense that it allowed Rory to be able to confide in her mom and talk about a lot of things, although there were a lot of things that she also hid from her mom. But like the best friend banter they had going on was too far because sometimes it led to Rory not really having that parental guide in a sense because everything was all vibes right <laughs> everything was just like easy going and maybe too maybe a little too easy going and so I feel like there was a there was a blurry line between the friendship and parenting and this might have been a little bit responsible for stifling Rory's growth not helping her to face challenges like head on maybe responsible responsible for her running away when Mitchum told her that she wasn't good enough. Okay, maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. But just my thoughts. The second thing I want to call out here is Paris's relationship with her professor. I think that it was a bit weird. It is not wrong. Obviously, it's not illegal as long as they are two consenting adults. It is fine. But... I think that we can't rule out the fact that there was a power imbalance in this relationship. The next thing I want to talk about is the romanticization of cheating. Yeah, Logan cheated, Lorelai cheated, Dean cheated, Rory cheated. I don't know, maybe Luke cheated and we didn't know, whatever. But the point is that cheating is not romantic. No matter how you spin it, Rory and Logan's affair was too casual and sometimes like we were rooting for them. Like we find we found ourselves rooting for these cheaters, okay? It is never okay, right, to cheat. Team Logan's out there, please don't come for me. But we can't be silent on this. Real life cheating hurts people. It takes away trust. By brushing this behavior, like making it look like, oh, it's just a little, it's just a sprinkle of betrayal. It's no big deal. It's, it's just a small mistake. It is a problem. And I feel like, of course, maybe this is a stretch. Well, maybe it's not really a stretch because, for example, if you're dating someone in real life and they are charming, they're great, and they are cheating, you can't minimize that aspect of them and just be like, oh, because they are good in every other area, you know, you know, cheating is probably okay as a pass for them. No, it is never okay. It is never romantic to be a cheater. And I feel like Gilmore Girls made us root for cheaters. I'm just going to put it out there. Sorry, but not sorry. <laughs> Okay, so I think the next and the final thing I'll talk about here is the toxic the toxicity in the relationships on Gilmore Girl Girls. And we see this come across as possessiveness, ghosting, commitment issues, like with Logan and Rory. These are not cute. These are toxic. And I know that people overuse the word these days. People have overflowed the word toxic and use it when it's not even descriptive of what is being described. 
But in this case, these are qualities of toxicity in relationships. These are toxic behaviors in relationships. You shouldn't be ghosting people that you love or you care about. You shouldn't be cheating on people that you love or care about. And I mentioned this, I think, in a video I did earlier about how even though Logan was charming and nice and, you know, said all the right things, he had a whole, he had a whole fiancé, right? And he was making arrangements to have uh, Rory be in a hotel and they will still, you know, keep seeing each other while he has a fiancé somewhere. It is toxic behavior. It should never be normalized. I'm calling this out because these were these were the people that were rooting for in this story, in this show, and they were exhibiting this. Obviously, people have flaws. People have their issues. But I don't, there are some things that should not be normalized or that we shouldn't minimize. And these are some of the examples of those things. Now, I would also mention, of course, I think I mentioned this in a video I did before. The, some of the qualities that were being displayed here were as a result of their immaturity, their emotional immaturity. These guys were dating at 16, which I believe is super young for people to be dating or be involved in a, in a committed, healthy relationship that goes beyond just hey we're friends right if your emotions are not like if they're not fully equipped for that level of commitment yet then you're probably too young to be dating it's not to say that teenagers cannot be emotionally mature but it is not the norm for a teenager to be emotionally mature yeah these are my thoughts about these things i feel like some of this behavior should be held accountable it shouldn't be things that we romanticize or excuse it can have a way of impacting like the way we see our real life and so we should be careful about you know accepting some of those things as the norm it's still a show and i know it's not real thank you guys for watching this video let me know which other behavior did you think was probably wrong or not worthy of emulation on girl more girls please let me know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and i will see you in the next one bye